So it's finally here, the big monumental event of the year. Wheel of Time Season 2 finally has a trailer. Yeah. Now, it's not a secret to say that I don't like the Wheel of Time Season 1. And because of that, I've started reading the Wheel of Time books. I'm currently on book 7. You can see my journey and my thoughts on the Wheel of Time books up here through the Wheel of Time playlist. Yeah, it it's safe to say I didn't like the Wheel of Time Season 1. And after reading the books, I just like it even more because... Oh my god, how did Season 1 butcher the book so badly? And not just even as an adaptation, just as an overall piece of media. It's, it's not good. And the stuff that the showrunner has been saying about Season 2 did not make me think that season two is gonna be any better but what i will say is that after seeing the trailer i do think that it looks better than season one but not by much because overall my main thoughts on the trailer are is that this just looks like a big pile of fan fiction whether it's good or bad fan fiction we have to wait and see i mean it's probably gonna be bad but let's not be too hasty let's uh do a little trailer reaction for this and break it down everyone has a choice and every choice has a consequence. So we open up with some uh, nice uh, sexy shots of uh, Rosamund Pike. What I will say is that Rosamund Pike is good casting for Moraine. What they did to her character in season one, I did not like. Because not only did it just not make sense of the character from the books, but also just in the sense of the show, it didn't make any sense. And it was so counterproductive. It's like, why did they do that? You know, the showrunner Rafe Judkins was all like, yeah, this show is like super feminist. We really want to show all these women being strong and powerful. But I just find it funny how they have a strong and powerful character like Moraine. And not only do they nerf her throughout like the first third of the season, but also by the end, they nerf her even more because they take away her magic. It's honestly just really annoying because Rosamund Pike can be a good Moraine. She is a phenomenal actress, but... The way the show is presenting Moraine, they just don't do the character justice. She is doing the best she can with her performance, but it's the writing that's holding her back a lot. Also, I believe this is a shot of the White Tower. The architecture looks quite nice. That's the thing with the show. It has nice production values to a point. At times, the sets and the production value can feel quite limited and cheap, but from an overall design perspective, the show does look quite nice. There is a lot of talent behind the camera. I'm bigger than my body. I gotta say, I'm not a fan of the music choice for this trailer either. In many ways, it makes it feel like a teenage fan fiction. It feels very teen drama. And whilst you can argue that The Wheel of Time has teen drama elements, this makes it feel like a very cheap teen drama that you would see on something like The CW. We didn't defeat the Dark One. We set him free. So, Yosha Shradowski, to me, I've always said, is a good Rand and has the potential to be a very good Rand if they actually gave him material, because in Season 1, he was severely sidelined. Like, incredibly so. In the book, The Eye of the World, Rand is the main character. Season 1 takes that urgency away from Rand, gives it to Moraine for some odd reason, which is the equivalent of making Dumbledore the main character of a Harry Potter show. But even with the limited screen time he had in Season 1, I've always said Yosha Shradowski would make a good Rand. But also, he looks like Rand. Granted, I don't know why they buzzed his hair off in this trailer and in Season 2. Just His hair looked good at the end of Season 1. Why did, why, why did he buzz it off? It just... Huh? And a lot of shots in this trailer do solidify the point that Yosha Shradowski is good physical casting for Rand, and I think in a lot of ways has the potential to be a very good Randall Thor. The thing is with this jacket here, is this supposed to be him, like, in the red jacket? Like, because in the book, Rand Al Thor has a very specific red dragon jacket. It's like red and gold, and it's very distinct. And this costume here looks very similar to the design of that jacket. Like, on the cover too, I think it's Memory of Light, which is the last book, which I haven't read. Like, again, I'm only on, like, book seven. But I've seen the cover. And this costume here very much reminds me of the red dragon coat. So I'm hoping he actually does wear it in the show, because, like, to me, that's very distinct. <laughs> Do you know what I will say about the actor who plays Ishamael slash Bowsamon? He doesn't really look very menacing. He has this look on his face that is like sleazy and scumbaggery-esque, but he doesn't have like a menacing presence. I don't look at him and I'm I'm not terrified. I just go, okay, it's just some dude in like a jacket. He, he doesn't have a presence. No one should have that much power. Okay, so this shot of a group of people sitting around a circular table, apparently this is the Forsaken, which is like, it's kind of too little too late. Like in season one, they did not mention or address the Dark One and the Forsaken and his whole thing. Like, they mention the Murdral, they don't mention the Forsaken, they get to the Eye of the World, and there's no Agonor, there's no Balthamel, there's no Green Man, they don't address any of that. Now, granted, at the beginning of the Great Hunt, there is a meeting between all the Dark Friends and the Forsaken, I think, or it's mainly all the Dark Friends. But 
yeah, this circular shot is kind of like, okay, if this is meant to be the Forsaken, it's kind of like, why didn't you establish them in season one? Because in this point of the story, even though we're starting off on like book two, and like apparently this season is like a hybrid of book two and book three, the Forsaken should already be somewhat established as a threat. And just like shoving them unceremoniously into the trailer, it's like, okay, too little, too late. Okay, so that creature or that person, zombie looking thing emerging from the shadows, looks okay, but I have no idea what that's supposed to be of. And that's something I'll say too about the Wheel of Time show. It's really missing the grit. I look at the visual style of this show and I go, where's the grit? Where's the texture? When I imagine the look of the Wheel of Time, I do imagine the look of the Lord of the Rings films because in many ways that like gritty, filmy, like lived in filmic look is what you would want for the Wheel of Time. Because this show is shot digitally, it just feels too clean and pristine. Where is my blooming? Where is my halation? Where is my film grain? Like, you can do this all digitally. You can emulate film stock through digital post-production and color correction. Just do it for the show. I think they do it a lot in The Walking Dead, because I think in the early seasons of The Walking Dead, they did shoot on film. But in the later seasons, they just emulated it. Or maybe they all do just shoot every season of The Walking Dead on 16mm. But it's kind of like, come on, think about the visual aesthetic of your show. Make it feel grounded, make it feel gritty, make it feel lived in. Sorry if I'm being all film bro on you, I just like the look of the film. And I feel like the Wheel of Time show aesthetically would benefit from having that kind of distinctive look. Together we face the impossible. So there are glimpses of Nynaeve and Egwene, and I think Elaine is in these shots as well, of them going into a room. I think this is where they get the trial of being accepted as Aes Sedai, which, yeah, that's a thing from the book. That's cool. I'm very curious to see how this plays out, because I remember those chapters in the books, specifically in The Great Hunt, being somewhat interesting. But as the books go on, I find the Egwene, Elaine, and Nynaeve subplots to be very boring. That might also just be the way they're paced in the book. Like, they do follow Egwene, Elaine, and Nynaeve fairly consecutively in the books, but in book two, they do jump around a fair bit but for the most part in book two i do like their subplot it's fairly good it does like drag a little bit but in book three and onwards it gets a bit muddy and a bit kind of boring and then you get to books five and six and oh my god just i want to tear my hair out they're, they're so dull so now we have this shot of rand and lanfear and i'm gonna say this now the actress playing lanfear is beautiful she is good looking don't get me wrong but she's not how I imagine Lanfear to look in my head, because in the book, Lanfear is supposed to be, like, stunningly beautiful. And in doing so, I've always imagined her to have, like, this really, like, soft glow around her, almost kind of like Galadriel in the Lord of the Rings films. There's something about her that makes me go, she doesn't feel like Lanfear yet, and maybe that's just because this is a trailer and I haven't seen her talk yet. But as of right now, she doesn't have, like, the the silky, but also, like, kind of ethereal feel of Lanfear. She is beautiful, don't get me wrong, I just... Don't correlate her to Lanfear yet. Protecting Rand, guiding him, that is the only thing that matters. So the stuff with Moraine talking to Lan about Rand, that's good. That is what I imagined Book Moraine to be like. But also, it's kind of like, I don't like how everything is so disconnected. I don't like how she's taken away from Rand from so early on in the story. Because again, they're merging books two and three together and Rand's just like gone off on his own. And it's like... I need more scenes between Rand and Moraine and Lan. I need that group to be together more than they were in the show. But just going off the trailer, this conversation seems very in spirit of the books. I don't think it's a direct scene taken from the books, but this dialogue between Moraine and Lan is something that I would imagine that would happen in the books off page, off screen, whatever you want to call it. You can't control it. A cool visual detail I will say is that when Rand is channeling, you can see a bit of taint in his sidene, which is kind of cool. The shot of Rand, like, pushing Moraine up against the wall, I don't know when that's gonna happen. That could be for real, that could be in a vision. I have a feeling it might be, like, a dream or a vision, but it could be for real. I mean, again, I have no idea, because this trailer is, like, it's showing me bits and pieces of things I, like, recognize, but also I don't at the same time. You know you have something inside you. There's also glimpses of Perrin using his wolf brother ability, which is cool, and I believe we're gonna get Elias this season, because they didn't show Elias in the previous season. I really hope they do justice to Perrin this season, because in last season, they butchered him. They did him dirty. And the thing is, was that, like, in the books, Perrin was always boring to me until book four, and then ever since book four, he's, like, risen up as to be, like, one of my favorite characters. Now it's, like, the holy trio for me 
right now is Rand, Matt, and Perrin. The thing is, part of me hopes that they do kind of just like forget about the baggage of him killing his wife, which is funny actually, that character does exist in the books. I think it's in book four when he goes back to the two rivers. He sees the character, I think the character's name is Lila. He sees her and is just like, oh, if he stayed back home, like, that girl apparently had a crush on him and he, and he might have married her one day. I found that so interesting when I got to that part in The Shadow Rising. I was like, oh crap, that's his wife in the show that he kills. But yeah, it's funny. Part of me kind of wishes that they just, like, forget about the Lila stuff, but then the other part of me is just like, oh, you do have to develop it because you set up in season one and you have to continue that thread. But also, it's just so bad in season one and I really hope they can just like brush past it, but they probably won't. Something that calls for blood. It's funny, you see a bit of Donald Flynn as Matt Coulthorn in this, but he doesn't say anything. So again, I can't judge his performance as Matt compared to Bonnie Harris because honestly, I've got nothing to go on. In all like the behind the scenes stills and the clips we've seen in this trailer, he doesn't do anything. He's just looking sad and like like grim and like in pain in certain shots. I want to know how to control it. Okay, so we get to this point in the trailer, and in my brain, I'm like, oh, this is just gonna be glorified fan fiction again. This is gonna be exactly like season one, where they'll do tiny little things that are from the book, but for the most part, it's just fan fiction because I'm like 99.9% .9 sure Rand and Loghain have not met properly in the books. I'm like at the very beginning of book seven, and I'm pretty sure Rand has not met Loghain. I'm pretty sure the only encounter Rand has ever had with Loghain is when he's in Camelin, he climbs the wall to get a better look at Loghain being like paraded through the streets in a cage, they lock eyes and then Rand falls off the wall into the palace where he meets Elaine. So, uh, what, what, what's going on here? What, what? The last battle's coming. So this shot of the town that the Shanshen are hanging out in, actually, that, to me, I'm hoping is Farmer, because in my brain, that's what Farmer looks like. That actually does look like how I imagined it to be, because I remember in the behind-the-scenes videos from Entertainment Weekly, the, the pictures, I remember going... Oh, this isn't how I imagined Falmer to look like. I don't know where this all takes place. But this shot here makes me go, oh, yeah, they're in the village, like, town thing. Where, like, they, they gather everybody up and then, like, the Shanshen are, like, parading around and torturing them and taking control of the village. And for the most part, the design of the Shanshen are pretty cool. Though I do think some of the costumes are a bit too extravagant. Like, this guy's, like, collar piece is just way too big. I, I don't know if that's like accurate to the book descriptions, I don't remember the book descriptions, but I don't remember them being so extravagant and over the top. So there's like a very brief flashback of Perrin playing with his sister and um, if you've read the books that's uh, that's kind of sad. If our friends were in trouble, why would that ever stay here? I find it funny how in this trailer they show us very brief glimpses of certain characters, like Elaine is there, she has no lines of dialogue, and also I just find it weird how they're introducing Elaine in this season when again, Rand should have met Elaine in Camelin, and it's like, why didn't they do that in season one? They weren't even in Camelin in season one. They didn't even go to Camelin. <laughs> There's also like a very brief snippet of Avienda, and it's kind of like, this is why I don't really like trailers for TV shows, because you have like eight to ten episodes of these like big budget like TV shows. They don't really showcase a lot of things, and because of that, you can't really gather a picture of what the overall story for the season is supposed to be. Like, this is just a bunch of, like, random clips. And for the most part, most of the clips they do use in trailers is from, like, the first three episodes. So again, I don't get the overall sense and picture of what the story for this season is supposed to be. So, this shot with Rand on the wheel... Is this supposed to be a dream sequence? Because I genuinely have no idea where this is supposed to take place. Because if anything, that reminds me of imagery from like the Shadow Rising when he and Matt are with the Aiel and then Matt gets hanged and stuff. And it's like... what What is going on here? I genuinely don't know what this is supposed to represent. Again, this might be a dream. Maybe he's in Tamri... Tam... 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 The dream world. I'm tired of being a spoke in the wheel. You're not a spoke boy. You are the water that turns the wheel itself. This final moment between Rand and Swan Sunshine, again, it makes me go, Josta Shradowski is very good casting for Rand, and if they'd given him the material in Season 1, I believe he could have been a great Rand, and I think in Season 2 they're going to amend that, because just from that there, he has a presence, he has a look, and I go, yeah, that's Rand, that's Rand Thor. that is the Dragon Reborn, I see the vision. And I do find it kind of interesting, but also kind of weird how he's now interacting with Sawan in this specific location. Like, I actually have no idea where they are, because in the book this takes place in Falma. No, not Falma, it takes place in, um... 
Faldara, and it looks like the White Tower, but it also doesn't, but then also if Logan's there, so they probably are in the White Tower. But either way, I'm curious to see how this is going to play out, because this is a conversation they have at the beginning of book two, and that's also where Lan comes in with one of his best lines. You know, the line where Lan's like, oh, there's only one rule for being a man. Whatever comes at you, face it on your feet. I'm curious to see if that's going to happen in the show, but... I don't know. Overall, I'm kind of conflicted on this trailer because on the one hand, I can appreciate that there is more of an attempt to make this feel more like the books. There's a bigger focus on Rand. There is imagery in this trailer that is indicative of the books. But then also there are moments in this trailer where I go, what are they adapt? What are they doing? Are they even adapting the books at this point? And because the overall vibe of the trailer is giving me fan fiction vibes, it makes me go, oh, this is going to be like season one all over again, where it's like, on paper, they do bits of the book, but for the most part, it's just a glorified fan fiction. It has no resemblance to the overall book. They take the overall outline, and then they, like, manipulate it and warp it and put in their own ideas and their own, like, story threads, and it becomes unrecognizable. And also, for this trying to be an adaptation of The Great Hunt, I don't see a lot of elements of The Great Hunt apart from the Shan Chen. Like, they don't even fully showcase the Horn of Valir. Like, apparently there's like the thing in the box and that's the Horn of Valir, but I didn't see a horn. Where's Ingtar and the rest of the group that goes with them to do the hunt for the horn? If they're doing the Dragon Reborn stuff, why is Perrin hanging out with Avienda? It should be Fael. And that's the thing. Because season one is a bad adaptation of the Eye of the World, it makes it hard for the showrunners and the creators to go, oh, we have to redirect the ship and change course and alter the events of season two because now we can't be as book accurate because we weren't as book accurate in season one. And so now they're just making up a bunch of different things and it just... It feels like fan fiction. It's very complicated and honestly, I don't know how this is all going to pan out. They're saying, oh, we're doing the Great Hunt and we're also doing elements of the Dragon Reborn and we're going to like mush them together. But how does that work? Because this trailer does not focus on the Horn of Valir. It doesn't even address the idea that they're doing the hunt for the horn. But then also, Rand is off doing his Dragon Reborn subplot, but then he also runs into Lanfear, which is the thing that happens in the Great Hunt. And it's all supposed to like converge together, and I, I don't see how this is all supposed to converge together. And that's the biggest issue I have with the trailer and season one, and what I'm guessing is going to be season two as well, because looking at the trailer, a lot of it feels like fan fiction. A lot of it feels like it's the writers making up their own stuff. And because they're doing it, in many ways, it makes me think, why are you adapting the Wheel of Time property and calling this show the Wheel of Time if in many ways you're trying to avoid telling the story of the Wheel of Time just to make up your own fan fiction events? Why are you adapting the source material if you don't like the story that's been told in the books and you're trying to improve it with your own vision? Like, no, adapt the books, make changes where they are necessary. But for the most part, you don't have to change everything just to make it feel different and your own thing. Because look, on paper, from this trailer, it looks a bit better than Season 1. But at the same time, it's going to have the same problem as Season 1 because so far... I can't really see them adapting a lot of the elements from the book properly. To be nice, I'm glad that from the trailer anyways, they seem to be giving Yotra Shradowski as Rand more of a chance to shine. Because in many ways, there are lots of scenes in this trailer that go, that's Rand Thor. This is like really great casting. Hopefully he does the role justice properly in season two. But then on the other hand, there's a bunch of stuff in the trailer where I'm just like, what? What is this? What am I, what, am I supposed to recognize this? But to wrap things up, overall, I think the trailer is better than I thought it was going to be. I don't think it's great as a trailer as well. I don't like the trailer music. But also, in a lot of ways, it is just solidifying the idea I had coming into this trailer, which is that season two is just going to be like season one, maybe a bit better. But for the most part, it is just going to be a bunch of fan fiction that just happens to have the name Wheel of Time stamped on it. But who knows? I could be wrong. Maybe season two comes out and it is amazing. But so far, it looks better than season one but not by that much but those are just my thoughts what did you guys think of the trailer for the wheel of time season two let me know in the comments down below like subscribe follow me on social media all that good stuff until we meet again i'll see you guys next time